Hey everyone, Mike Carlson again here uh, to talk about uh, the next video installment for the Kativ do-it-yourself vault implementation. So <clears throat> the next phase here we're going to talk about restoring the backup that you've downloaded uh, and kind of some of the other general ADMS settings that exist. And you know, just to review in the previous videos, we've you know walked you through things like intro to vault, what the architecture is, as well as getting everything installed on the server. Um, so if you've missed that or haven't seen it, please uh, back up and go through that uh, before going into this next step. So um, from here, what we're going to do is restore this backup. So that backup that you downloaded, uh, you know, it has a file name, uh, ADMS server, and a date stamp on it. Um, and in order to do that, we're going to have to go into our ADMS console on the server, launch it, Log in, we're going to use the administrator login. There's currently no password by default set on it. And this is just kind of some of the other spots of where to go to to get to the restore session. So uh, what you need to do is uh, you're going to download that. You're going to unzip the folder that you download uh, and extract it somewhere, you know, on your hard drive. Do this all local. Please don't use a, uh, even though the backup's really small at this point, um, it, it's much more effective if you just get it local, copy it up local and then wait for it all to finish. So once the backup's restored here, we're, I'm gonna review just kind of some of the options you have on the ADMS server console. Not that there's a whole lot, but uh, just so you're aware of what everything is. And uh, please change the administrator password. <laughs> uh, it's worse one of those things you might forget about as you go down, go down the line and start having other users and add users and whatnot. So um, change that password. We're also gonna look at kind of the, some of the user accounts uh, and talk about what those roles do. There's just a few different roles. There's not a lot with, you know, Vault Basic. It's really role-based, so, you know, what, what you can do, you can do throughout the entire Vault. Um, the higher levels of Vault introduce more security and uh, also additional roles, but right now we'll just review what the Vault Basic ones are. Now let's flip over to the server and uh, let's review everything there. Okay, back on our server, we're gonna come over and uh, launch the ADMS console. Uh, come in and we'll get of course our splash screen here for a minute as this thing's launching uh, and once it's in place you'll notice that the first time we launch it we're going to get a message that tells us hey that we don't have any existing vaults do we want to create a new one or do we not want to if we say yes we're going to create a default uh, kind of out of the box vault if we say no it's just going to give us the option to restore an existing one either way you'll have the option to restore from here we're going to go to tools and select the restore button. And once we get the restore up, we're gonna we're gonna now browse out to where our um, uh, backup is. So remember, I talked about in the PowerPoint extracting the backup. So here's what you downloaded from uh, from the Kativ website. Come in, extract it, and you can see that the the, the uh, extracted version is right here in this folder. So if I jump back over to my uh, restore dialog box here, I'm going to browse out to that location. Just be careful on how you would extract this. Uh, the, um, you know, if you do an extract all, you'll get kind of this double folder structure that you'll see right here um, because I've extracted it inside the extraction. So um, just go ahead and select for the restore, select the folder that has the direct database and file store. Uh, folders inside of it and if we look we can see the default location so this is the databases right so the where do we want the default databases to go for please just select that as default location for now the one we can probably change here is the one for file store select the radio button go to file store and browse out uh, to a location I only have one drive so I'm just gonna tell it C drive and I'm gonna call this thing uh, um, you know, vault fs, vault file store, underscore vault. I like underscore because it pops it on the top, but, uh, you know, whatever you choose. It's just a folder name. Uh, you can choose it. Uh, once that's defined, you'll see it's in place. We have our location for the file store. We'll select OK. It's going to run through the motions now uh, of restoring. So it's really in the background right now, unpacking the databases because they were packed up or, or zipped up, uh, if you want to call it that, and uh, taking the file store and copying that out to the new location. It's not going to take a long time here just because it's a small data set and it shouldn't take long in your environment. Once we're there, we're going to get our login screen. I talked about it. 
the administrator doesn't have a password, right? So uh, go ahead here, no need to enter a password, select OK, and you'll be now logged into the vault. It's going to do a quick migrate of the database just to make sure it's up in sync with you know, whatever service packs you may have on uh, or if installed in the beginning. Once that's done, you can go ahead and hit the yes button or OK, excuse me, that we're ready to go. So you'll see now, if we go under the vaults folder, we have a database that's called vault. It has some content, as you can see in here. You'll also notice, notice how it says zero bytes versus the 17, right? Um, and what it's doing is once, whenever you do a restore, it's just doing a validation of the database in the back end. So those numbers will change as you go. Here, uh, just to kind of expand all the folder structures, you can see what everything is there. I'm going to go run now, run into administration and uh, talk about the few options we have from an administrative side of things. The first here is I go to advanced settings and I always like to do this right up front. Go, in, go into settings and um, you'll see, remember we talked about in introduction that Autodesk Vault impersonation account, here it is in password, but I like to take all these logs and only keep a maximum number of logs, six, ten, whatever you feel is necessary. Now you'll see this other option for paging. We'll see this also at the client side. So this is the number. So if you search for something, this is the number of values that will show in your window. And you can increase or decrease that as necessary. Again, it's really a speed thing. The next, let's look at kind of some of the, uh, the roles and user accounts that exist here for the vault. So from here, I'm going to go into roles and uh, just kind of give you a scan over of what the different roles are that exist. So the first is administrator, which really, in a sense, can do everything. There's not a role they don't have, right? I mean, which makes sense. You need the administrator account to do everything. And now we'll go and look at these other accounts. And it boils down to just a couple in the in the doc editor one and two. There's just a couple, and then in vault cons or excuse me, document consumer, it's really a read only function. Look at all those roles, all read. And if we go to our doc, uh, document editor one, you'll see they have things like file checkout, check in, some of the different roles uh, that exist for them, which is to really to get most of the daily work done. And the only difference in level two is we introduce the ability to move files and to rename files and folders. So that's really the big clincher in, the, in one and two. You can create groups. As you see here, I've created groups for editor one, editor two, read only, really just to point to what the different roles are. And I've created users and assigned them into that role. So again, kind of more generic so you can see what's going on. And that way you can come into things like these user accounts and you can take these knowing what, what group they roll into, what role they are. Now you can modify them from here or add to them as necessary. So if I'm going to go into one of these user accounts here. Let's pick the Vault 2, uh, Editor 2, and just change the name, right? So I'm just going to change the name to myself. I'm going to give myself a better username. And again, so my role isn't going to change in the Vault. This is just username information. I'm going to go ahead and blank out the password here. See the group? I'm going to keep in the group. Now this is going to tell me that the search indexes need to be rebuilt. Built. So every time you do this, it's going to rebuild what uh, it's using in the background for searching to make to be able to make the searching quicker. So you may see a little bit of a vault performance from a client in if people are in the client when you make these changes. It's nothing nothing major and standard out of the box stuff. So all, I'm clicking back on the vault here just so you can see that the file store validation has been done. Notice that it doesn't have the slash value to um, you remember it said zero and seventeen before with that slash. So the file store validation went through, it's complete, and there's no issues there. So we reviewed uh, going through the server, restoring the backup, uh, and some of the server options that exist, as well as the other user accounts. Uh, user accounts are also accessible from the client as well. So in the next series, we'll review that as well, but uh, and that as well as other client kind of access and configuration pieces that exist. So this is really the, the heavy end of the vault, right, where everybody's going to be getting in, checking files out, checking them in, using them with the CAD tools. Uh, so again, that will be in the next video in this series. Thank you for watching.